Doc, are you all right? Come on, help my buddy out. Pull on this red line. Come on, you guys. You got to help my friend out. Come on. What's taking so long? Look it. It's a 16 hour ice cold water rescue uh, program that's uh, sponsored by the uh, New York State OFP and C. We've got fire departments from four different counties here taking this class to get the basic knowledge on ice rescue situations, more or less the first response. When the engine company gets there, they can set up and uh, perform the rescue while other resources are coming. And it's, today is their second day and they're doing the final scenarios. We've got a lot of groups working through uh, different situations. The end result is to just get the victims rescued. They're right there. They're right there though. Hey, when can I call for assistance? Are they, are those three? Uh, yeah, they're the three. Safety. What? They're safety. Okay. I got two victims out there. Looks like I've got multiple holes coming in. Possibly more than two victims, so keep an eye out just in case. Yep. The RDC, I need two people going out as far take the fire person we're going to send one more person with the boogie board for the closer for the closer person okay. which side do you want to be on it's up to his call your call right hand side right hand side right. And whoever's on the boogie board on the left hand side four people okay. here. Turnout here is the reality of the fire service. That's that when when the alarm goes off, that's most of the, that's the protective uh, uh, ensemble that all firefighters have, and they realize that you know that's not something you wear around water. You know the rule of thumb is if you're 10 feet away from the water's edge, you should have flotation device on, and it just shows the you know when when we show up and you got the influence of uh, people around the scene as you know for help. Our, we're all type A personalities, we want to get out there and help. So it's just to show you that you can get in that, that trouble situation with your turnout here. You guys might want to step back from the shore there a little bit just because I don't want you falling in. Hey, stop him! Stop him! Stop him! <laughs> Big rock. Oh. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay, he's coming off of that. Still got you. We're gonna need okay. hands on the yellow line. Signal. Yeah. Right. Signal. Pull the yellow line. Anybody with a free hand? You good? You guys watch the other. I don't see back. Big guy, that's what they're 
Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> You're trying that. Three guys that kept trying to run in, and then one of the firefighters made it in as hard as I tried to get him not to. I tried. I tried. Um, it's, it's very distracting, and obviously, we had a lot of people here. If, you, if it's if there's not this many people here, I don't know if we could have done everybody at that quick of an extrication. You're you're looking. I was paying attention to the guy, making sure he's still flailing in the back. As long as he was still moving, he was last. Get the victim in. Let's get the next one. The one crew was out there debating over what they were doing. Let's move. You got victims. Move. In a real life situation, if this was a more public area, you're going to have more people than that to deal with. Oh, yeah. So, like, he might be, it might be his friend out here, but now you have to worry about another Joe Schmore. You're trying to keep track of everybody else. Well, you got your haul team. Did anyone realize how many of you were hauling at the end with the RDC? Oh, a lot. At nine. So just think of how many people show up on your calls. You might be calling mutual aid to do nothing and have one of your trained people assembling eight or nine just people who know how to hold a rope and pull when you tell them to. But you can see how you suck up people like I tried super to get the fast. Lawnmower. Expectation from the general public is when that fire engine or they call 911, that all the local agencies are going to be able to handle any situation that, that's for it. With the uh, uprise of water-related incidents uh, throughout the state, it's important that uh, firefighters get this training so we can initiate some help to the victims right away. You know, the, the weird thing is, you know, we, we always hope to have good weather and good ice for this, but in reality, the type of ice that we're dealing with today is not the ice that people are going to get in trouble with. You know, the, the potential is, you know, ice fishermen, it's a huge sport within the county and all over and you got the potential for victims get to get in trouble but really is that when uh, it starts to get warm out and the ice starts to thaw out is where people actually get in trouble they they go out and uh, do things they shouldn't be guys down there you're in charge of staging i like how you know as soon as the, the other two groups came and kind of inundated you you were kind of stood there for a second and then they said hey you take care of staging i want them all staged right there right off the board pay so. attention to who's going like this too yeah. because one, one of these guys did this and our boat started moving and they weren't even on the boat with us so if like yeah. if you're tethered to one thing make sure that you see who went out there and who's doing this right like yeah. they're sort of things we're pointing them out now so it's right. better to learn in training that you miss the point than to learn the hard way plus all of your efforts in a real job it wouldn't have been those 20 feet that they prepped it would have been from here to there yeah. we're doing that same thing. So you now start to weigh the fatigue factor. Once he got me up on that board and I knew that they were going to be talking me back about something he got. <laughs>